Back at the border sessions, two days of interviews uh, from uh, The Hague. Uh, another hour, another guest. Hi. Hello, Aaron. Who are you and what do you do? Well, my name is Norbert Fischoff and I work in space. You work in space? Well, unfortunately, not really up in space, but at least I work the, on the, the Earth field? for space. For space. So, yeah, but so, so um, tell me a little bit more about, about that. So what do you do now? Well, I'm a space systems engineer. This is the guys you call who develop complete systems. I used to work for space agency and design space missions itself. I worked on a space station, but now I work for energy systems in space. So I'm helping to create solar based space, space based solar power systems. So we collect the sunlight in space and beam it down on the Earth to solve the energy systems energy problems we have here on the ground. Yeah, and and, uh, and, and uh, how far, how is the state of doing that? So what do you already do and where do you want to go? Well, we really at the end be able to produce or generate the power in space to serve 10 billion people in the, on the Earth, which is a number that we will hit around 2100 after Christ. And at the moment we are following a long-term strategy, which is like 30, 40 years until we are over there. And we work on the little niches already on the robots and we work on the return capsule and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and what, are the, the, what are the biggest hurdles you have to take to get there? Um, I think the biggest issue is that it's a really far-fetched strategy, right? And it's very visionary. Yeah. And if you talk with somebody, at least that you don't get the door slammed shut in front of your face, that out, you're completely crazy, right? Yeah. So yeah, but I think we're getting there. People start to accept it more and more, also thanks to the Germans, which do lots of stuff in solar power and wind power, right? With all the renewables. So yeah, eventually we'll get there. Yeah. So you have to set uh, like ambitious goals, but at the same time, that makes it difficult uh, to, uh, to, so to say, to sell it to people. That's right, yeah. I mean, every journey, journey starts with a small step, right? But if you don't at least have the, the broad vision, where do you end up? You know, just say, we want to go around the corner, you end up behind the corner. If you say, I want to go to the next city, then we might go at least around the corner and over the next corner and the next corner, right? Yeah. Um, does it help you uh, in, in, in the space field that at the moment you've got a couple of people that are a lot in the, uh, in, in the media as well, say the... Um, uh, uh, the, the Elon Musk sort of sort of types. Did, did they help bringing the subject of space and far-fetched or, or ambitious goals mm -hmm. back into the, uh, the, the the view of, of a bigger audience? Yeah, well, it certainly helps. This is, thing is called like new space movement, right? This is what we call like the commercialization of space. It's not only the space agencies that are driving it, but there are certain companies doing that. It is a launcher business like what Elon Musk is doing, Bezos as well. But there are other guys who are building constellations like Planet Labs for Earth observation. And of course it helps because it, said it changes the mindset. So you can approach investors and it's not a complete crazy idea and the slam shot in front of my face doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. But they say, okay, let's get a coffee and talk about it. And then at least you pass the first hurdle. So it helps, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you say that that's, uh, at least then you don't, uh, the people don't um, uh, slam the door in, uh, in your face. Is, is, um, so is, is getting the right finances to do all your research, and do, is, that, is, is that a big problem? Um, yes and no. The trouble is more getting the finances can work now. That's not the thing. It's a, it's a question on the terms, right? Do you want to be in control still or will you be in control afterwards? I mean, these things have lots of risks. You're talking about programs that last 10, 20, 30, 40 years. So there will be something going wrong in the meantime. So you have need more fresh money, right? And it's not making sense to make a deal with somebody and then you lose the company in the second or third round, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the control about it, because at the end, these guys who invested it, they will not be able to run it. Yeah. It's not a completely commercial business, right? So that's the typical thing you have to be careful on. Also the IP, intellectual property. What do you patent? What do you not patent? And if you're talking about space solar power, the question about the governance. How many shoulders do you put on? How many shoulders will you rest the system upon on? How many people shall be in control about it? That's difficult issues. That's ethical issues as well. Yeah, and uh, and, and like you say about uh, uh, the the patents is of course always a discussion. Uh, uh, what do you uh, do? Patents help or do they hinder? Uh, do, yeah. do they uh, hinder innovation or do they help? Because if, if if you have put a lot of energy and money in it, uh, there needs to be a way to, to to get it back. So how do you how do you look uh, yourself upon uh, patents? Well, we need them at a certain point because at the end they, they increase the value of the company, right? So we got to have them because else if you want to go for an investor, you're worth nothing. But if you have at least the intellectual property and said, well, I've developed that stuff and I've patented it, then suddenly you're much more credible. So you're much more worth and then you can better negotiate. So therefore it's necessary, right? And on the other hand, of course, 
you have a patent, but you can still license stuff out. So yeah. it, if you play it properly, it can still advance. Sometimes the patent well. can be a, a defensive thing as well, right? You can, if you want, you yes. can, 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 can get people the right to use it, right. but you still have the right to... But I'm to, not in an say. Apple or Microsoft position, and I don't make any patent wars over here, right? At yeah. the end, we want to go to space, and we want to use space to solve the problems here on Earth. Yeah, and um, uh, <coughs> you, you said in 2100, then, then you, uh, you well, that, that is where you're... you're no, not moving. really. Um, we, are, we are talking about 2030. So we are, we are, our idea is to go to the moon. Um, the problem is if you want to sp sp build up like huge solar farms in space to beam the energy down on the ground, it's prohibitively expensive if you send the stuff up from the, from the Earth. Because we're talking about solar platforms that are built up in, in the geostationary orbit, that's the orbit of 36,000 kilometers above the ground, where the satellites take 24 hours to circle the Earth, like the telecom satellites are. But if you launch one kilogram over there, it costs $30,000. Imagine you have to launch something which has 500 tons or 1,000 tons. It's going to be expensive, super expensive, so yeah. nobody can afford it. But if you send it from the moon, it's only $250 per kilogram. Okay. So our idea is we go to the moon, it has all the sources, all the stuff we need, and we build the solar cells over there and we send them to the orbit. Because the funny thing is that everybody believes that the geostationary orbit, which is only 36,000 kilometers away, is so close to Earth, so the energy is low. And the moon is 360,000 kilometers away. But the fun stuff is, it's much easier to go from the moon to Chiyo, to the Chiyo station of it, than going from the Earth to Chiyo. If you're in Chiyo, you are nearly three quarters of the energy out. So you have invested so much energy, you cannot really leave the Earth. And on the moon, it's the same. So it's much easier to go from the moon to Chiyo than vice versa. Yeah. Uh, how big, big is the company? Uh, uh, is your company? I mean, it's a startup, right, at the moment. We are seven founders, and we have a few others who help us at the moment. We already have a project going on with NASA and with ESA. We are collaborating at the moment, we're setting up a collaboration, and we have a huge company in the back which we are negotiating as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, you said we're, um, uh, we're, we're, we're just a startup. Um, in, in, um, uh, in, in startup uh, uh, land, it's always about the scalable business, and it's always about, uh, and, it's, and, and everything is becoming software and all, and, and all that sort of, uh, sort of stuff that makes, makes it really scalable. How, mm -hmm. how scalable is your business? Super scalable, right? You take one satellite, take 10 satellites, so many rockets, so much infrastructure on the moon. It's usually, we can really start pretty, well, we can really start super small, but we can start with a certain limit, limited size and certain applications, and from then on we develop it. The good thing is, if you have the power up in space, you can beam it down. And if you have excessive power, you can desalinate water, which is of course needed everywhere in the world. And if you have the microwave beam, you could use the beam as well to transmit uh, information. So you can send information up from one side and down to the other side. So it's like a telecom system, it's a water system, and it's an energy system all in one. Yeah. Yeah. Who is your competition? There's nearly none at yeah. the moment. The guy who is like the founding father of all these different concepts is part of our team. So, yeah, there may be for certain aspects some competitors, but I don't think anybody's really thought on that grand scale as we are doing. Yeah. So in, in your uh, field of expertise, um, where uh, do you see the most innovation uh, uh, happening at the moment? There's like six areas we have really the innovation really happening and what we need. There's one side which is a bit like artificial intelligence to a certain extent or like advanced machine learning system. Then we got to have something because at the end we have like huge structures that orbit the Earth. And uh, you don't want to sit there every minute and check the orbits and just change stuff. It's got to be done by computer yeah. because else it's too expensive from the operation point of view. You've got to have some fabrication technologies. After all, we talk about some stuff on the moon, right? It shall be as much as automated as possible and not that I'm sitting there and screwing stuff. Yeah. You know? So then we've got to send guys to the moon to make sure we troubleshoot the stuff and also into orbit as well. So we've got to make sure that space medicine works because these people will stay there for months and weeks. Then we've got to have afterwards fabri to fabricate the stuff in, in space as well. So we have like robots that build the stuff together. That's another thing. So that things cling together on their own. We've got to work on... Um, and the transportation devices, which are not really that set way in, the, in the way we want, and complicated huge structures. So it's like six areas we have to, to progress on. And, and do you, uh, are there moments that you think, uh, what have we started? Why we haven't started? Now, what, have we, what, what have we started? The complexity of the uh, Well, we have ambition. started now on two fronts. Uh, our American partners have started on a return capsule, because the stuff that we sent from the moon will not be, we will have to go to Earth, into Earth orbit. And we will not stay with the refueling stuff, we will not stay in a high orbit, but we go to a low orbit, like where the ISS is, where the space station is. Because you cannot send humans up to Chiyo, because radiation is too high. So we got to send it down to LEO, to low Earth orbit, which is 400 kilometers high up. 
to get down there we decelerate in the atmosphere so we break through the atmosphere so we stay low we are just building the return capsule at the moment this is called oryx o r y x and some by our american colleagues together with nasa and the other stuff we're building is on the robots we're advancing at the robotic front to advance to, to build this stuff together yeah so this is the two things we have just started up with yeah um, Im Im impressive and that was a question i had and i just lost it because the music uh, oh, in, in too the back bad. <laughs> 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 um, uh, oh yeah no what because 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 you say of course we want to solve uh, say uh, uh, one of the real problems and that is uh, is energy um, uh, is, is energy uh, concert so so if I are used so you say it is solvable yeah uh, we can we can get enough energy for the people living on the we can even get now enough energy the trouble is we cannot get the energy when we need it that's our big issue here at the moment and uh, the problem is really if you have solar cells on the ground we can generate excess energy but unfortunately the Sun only shines at maximum 12 hours 16 hours or 8 hours wherever you are in the latitude right but unfortunately it doesn't shine exactly when we need it because we need it in the morning and in the evening and then the Sun is low yeah. and you cannot transport energy over thousands of kilometers that doesn't work so if you have something up in space my solar farms would run for 25 hours a day right yeah and um, then you give me the transmission system and we transmit it down with 50% of efficiency and we can beam it wherever we need it and that will work yeah. It's not discussion about the physics that it will work, it's more an issue about the economy. The economy from the ground does not work, as we have seen, but the economy from the moon shall work. Great, thank you very much. You're welcome, thank yeah. you very much yeah. as well. Uh, thank you for watching uh, two days of interviews at uh, the Border Sessions. We will be back here later if you watch live and if you watch On Demand, you can, um, of course, uh, see all the interviews we've done here. Thank you.